Hello everyone. So today we'll be starting with the first unit that is introduction to environmental studies. Beginning with the brief introduction about the term. So the term environment is derived from the French word that is environ, which literally means surroundings. So the literal meaning of this word environ is surroundings. This is from where the term environment came. So anything and everything which surrounds us, that is all living means, that is the biotic components, and all non-living, that is the abiotic components, present in nature forms the environment. So it's very clear with the definition that all living and non-living components present on this earth combine to form or uh, combine to give the term environment. So what do we call the living components? We define living components and as biotic components. Some of the examples of biotic components are microbes, plants, and animals. This is also mentioned in this picture given. So some there are these are a very few examples. There are many more. But just to give you an idea, what are the biotic and what is the difference between biotic and abiotic factors? Some examples of biotic factors are fungi, bacteria, archaea, animals, protists, plants. So that's what we said that every living component is a biotic component. So what are the abiotic components? Air, salinity, soil, temperature, light, water, minerals, pH, and humidity. Right? So all these non-living components combine to give abiotic factors. I hope this term is clear to you now. So the next, the Environmental Protection Act that came in 1986 defined the term environment as environment includes water, air, and land and the interrelationship which exists among and between the water, air, and land and also human beings, other living creatures, plants, microorganisms, and property. So what does this term define? So first of all, this Environment Protection Act came in 1986. So they gave a definition for this term environment. What did they say is the environment includes water, air, and land. These are the major components. So and water, air, and land and their interrelationship, which exist among and between water, air, and land. I hope this is clear. Ki unke beach mein jo interrelationship hai unka aapas mein, that is what is what also comes under environment and their relationship with human beings, other living creatures, plants, microorganisms, and property. So we have to count that there is water, air, or land ka kya relationship hai with human beings and other sorry, other living creatures. So this is how they define the term environment and this includes everything which comes under environment. So it is defined very apt in a very apt form. So this act came in 1986 and they gave this definition for the word environment. Moving to the next. Interactions between the biotic and abiotic components lead to a functional ecosystem and sustainable life on the planet Earth. So what does this line mean is that all the biotic and abiotic components individually, they will never lead to a uh, functional ecosystem, right? They will not contribute to anything, but it is their interactions, how they interact, how they give a, uh, like their interaction is what leads to a functional ecosystem. Their interaction is what leads to a sustainable life on this planet. So presence of water or air and sunlight individually, I hope you understand that if these are all different things and they are not interacting, there, there will be no life, right? If uh, due to the presence of sunlight, some molecules in air are reacting, they are forming something. This is how oxygen is formed, right? I hope you understand. So all these things, when they interact with each other, this is when they lead to a functional life on Earth. So, moving to the next. It is a well-known fact that anthropogenic activities and unsustainable consumption of natural resources by the human race have significantly damaged the environment and Mother Earth. And the degradation is still going on at a fast pace. 
So what do we understand by anthropogenic activities? So these are the activities that are originating from humans. Anything that human beings are doing, either directly or indirectly, are known as anthropogenic activities. So we all know that we are the sole destroyers of this and mother nature or our earth so it is a well known fact that these are uh, like anthropogenic activities are the major reason that we are consuming our resources in a very uh, like it is not a sustainable way of using our resources sustainable means you keep in mind the economic aspect the environmental aspect as well as the social aspect of any natural resource its presence right so if we are not consuming any resource in a sustainable way it will go it will be finished or it will be it will come to an end in near future right so our activities is what Lead, uh, what is leading to the degradation of our planet or our nature so it is uh, so it is our responsibility to protect the environment from getting degraded and polluted this is what is the only solution to it that we should learn how to protect the environment we should know and understand how sustainably we can uh, conserve our mother nature so this is I hope this is clear and this is a brief introduction about the term environment. Moving on to the next slide. So now it's the components of environment. Planet Earth is the only known planet in the universe with a diversity of life. Yes, we know this very well that it's the only planet Earth which has life on Earth. Life have been possible on planet only because of the healthy interactions between biotic and abiotic components. True. Like just we just read, it is because of the interactions between the biotic and the abiotic components that life sustains on the earth. Right? In a such a manner where the flow of energy and biogeochemical cycles follow a defined path. We all know about biogeochemical cycles, that is carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, and water cycle, phosphorus cycle. So these are the nutrient cycles and these are known as the biogeochemical cycles. So how is life sustaining on Earth? There is always a definite flow of energy. Uh, you have read about food chain. What happens is who eats whom is what we call it as food chain. So there is a definite flow of energy. If herbivores are dependent on plants, then they will eat plants and obtain their energy from plants. Other animals and human beings that uh, that uh, are dependent on plants will gain their energy from plants. Carnivores will obviously get their energy by eating herbivores. True. So there is a definite flow of energy. And these biogeochemical cycles also follow a definite path. Uh, if we study about water cycle, there always uh, what are the phases of water cycle are in a definite path. There, it's not that from one step you will shift on to the next. No, it is always in a defined manner. So all these things are what makes the life on Earth possible. So the planet Earth is categorized into different spheres which represent solid sphere as the rocks and soil, liquid sphere includes the water, and the gaseous sphere includes the air phases. So now, what is biosphere? So the overlapping zone of these three spheres where life is available is called biosphere. So what do we understand by this is, we have these three spheres, right? So biosphere is that region where the hydrosphere like the liquid gaseous and solid spheres overlap each other when all these three phases interact with each other they form a, a common inter overlapping region which we called as biosphere and biosphere is the region where life exists it is very important to understand that this is what we read in this first slide that interaction of these three phases is very important. Interaction of biotic and abiotic components is very important. And the region where they overlap is known as biosphere. I hope this would be clear to you all. 
this is in this summarizing this one i would say that we should understand that our planet is divided into three phases solid liquid and gaseous phase we all know we have some biotic and abiotic components present in the earth and their interaction is what is making life possible on earth right and this also includes the definite flow of energy in our uh, nature and the biogeochemical cycles also we read here what is sorry what is biosphere biosphere is the overlapping region of these three phases where life exists moving on to the next lithosphere so what do you, what do we understand by lithosphere so lithosphere came from a greek word that is lithos which means rocks so earth structure can be stratified into outer crust middle mantle and inner core regions so looking at this diagram you would understand that earth has been divided into three regions that is crust mantle and core starting from if we take a section of the earth starting from the uh, surface we'll see that this is the crust from 0 to 100 kilometers right this forms the outer crust the middle layer is known as the mantle and this is the core the innermost region is known as the core of the earth so have they have different different compositions what are all are present that is a different thing but you just have to understand that earth has been divided into three layers that is crust mantle and core crust being the outermost mantle being the middle layer and innermost is the core region so lithosphere is the outermost layer of the crust which represents the land mass of the planet so we were studying lithosphere right so what do we mean by lithosphere in this diagram what represents lithosphere so as you can see it's also mentioned here that crust the layer of crust and some part of the upper mantle represents the lithosphere it is the outermost layer that crust is the outermost layer and some part of mantle constitutes the lithosphere of the earth so what all does it consist it consists of rocks soil sediments and minerals it is the composition of lithosphere various geological structures or landforms like high mountains plateaus deep valleys and seabeds make the surface of the lithosphere uneven this is the reason why a lithosphere seems to be uneven sorry well, this is the reason why our lithosphere seems to be uneven it is because of the presence of mountains plateaus deep valleys in all it's like various geological formation and various landforms give this outlook to our lithosphere which is uneven in structure i hope it's clear so the next is mount everest mount everest is the highest point in the lithosphere we all know it is the highest peak so it is definitely the highest point of our lithosphere as well so various geological processes like weathering and erosion volcanic eruptions and biogeochemical cycles take place in the lithosphere so all these processes or you would say a phenomenon take place in the lithosphere so what we'll study what do we understand by weather weathering and erosion so weathering is the uh, weathering is the process where breaking down of rocks and minerals occurs right when big rocks break down into small small pieces it forms the soil or it just breaking down of big rocks is known as weathering and what is erosion erosion is when surface of the earth like surface of rock or earth is carried away by some agents it could be air it could be water it could be wind and many other but it is when the layer uh, when the surface layer of uh, rocks or earth is worn away or carried away then we call that process as erosions volcanic eruptions is very obvious you might be knowing what are volcanoes and biogeochemicals as we studied they take all these processes takes place in the lithosphere so different terrestrial ecosystems like forest grasslands deserts etc are, are found in the lithosphere 
so this is what we know we know what are forests we know what are grasslands and deserts and yes these all are found on the lithosphere that is found on the surface of earth so they all come under the litho uh, they are all counted under lithosphere i hope this much would be very clear to you all this is a introduction to lithosphere what lithosphere means the layers of our earth what all is counted under lithosphere that is the outer crust and some layers of mantle lithosphere is consisting of rocks soil sediments and minerals why is a lithosphere uneven is because of the various landforms and geological structures present highest point on a lithosphere is the uh, mount everest and what all processes occur in lithosphere are like weathering erosion volcanic eruptions and biogeochemical cycles i hope this much this much is very clear to you all so next moving to the next is hydrosphere so hydrosphere represents water masses on the planet first let's uh, start with the term hydrosphere from where did, uh, did this term come from hydrosphere me hydro means water again it's a greek word hydro and which means water so hydrosphere represent water masses on the planet present in the solid form solid form constitutes ice covers glaciers etc and and also the liquid form which includes the water bodies and the gaseous form which includes uh, water vapor so hydrosphere includes three forms of water we all know there there are three forms of water solid liquid and gaseous so solid uh, phase uh, uh, what comes under solid phase is ice covers and glaciers under the liquid phase uh, comes the water bodies and under the gaseous phase comes the water vapors so if we study the water concentration or what amount of water is present on earth so we all know earth has 75% water and 25% land so hydrosphere covers almost 3/4 of the total surface area of the earth that is 75% of the earth is covered with water so oceans and seas represent marine ecosystem which contains 97% of the total water content so out of those 75% as a whole 97% of this water is present in marine ecosystem that is it is salty water or saline water so 97% of the total water content just a second 97% of the total water content having a very high concentration of salts that makes it saline water is present in oceans and seas and the remaining 3% of the water resources are fresh water so uh, the remaining 3% of water is the only water which we can consume and is consumed by plants as well we can use in agriculture and other processes so 3% of water is fresh water and in what form it is present it is present in the form of glaciers rivers lakes ponds etc so i hope you understand what is the division how much water is present in which form so let's look at this diagram water on earth water on earth on water on earth is divided into saline water and fresh water 97% of water is saline water which is present in the seas and the oceans 3% is fresh water which is again divided into 2% is present as glaciers or ice caps and the remaining 1% is the surface water or ground water which is in the form of rivers lakes ponds aquifers etc this is the hydrosphere and the amount of water in which form it is present so this is the distribution of water resources on earth coming to the next point the, the hydrosphere is an integral part of the water cycle we all know that water cycle moves uh, around in three forms of water right so water being the main component hydrosphere has been an integral part of water cycle and it plays a crucial role in maintaining normal climatic meteorological physical chemical and biological functions on the planet 
So what are the functions of hydrosphere? Hydrosphere, first of all, is very important for the water cycle. We all understand because water cycle needs water and it, water is a, a hydrosphere constitutes water only. So, and other uh, role or uh, other functions of hydrosphere are maintaining normal climatic conditions. It's very obvious. Various processes like evaporation, transpiration and all the um, many other processes are involved, but what does water do? It helps in maintaining the normal climatic conditions. If uh, we exclude rainfall from our climate, it would not be possible to maintain a climatic condition, proper normal climatic conditions, right? So we need water for maintaining clim normal climatic conditions. And uh, meteorological functions. So what is meteorology? It is related to the atmosphere and its phenomena. That is like, uh, especially it's about weather and weather forecasting. So something uh, related to weather is uh, is uh, comes under meteorology. So maintaining meteorological functions, again, it's the same thing about the, uh, it's there's a difference between climate and weather. I hope you understand. Climate is a long-term uh, process and weather's change by, weather can change the day, or a week. Climate is like seasons we have. We have winters, we have summers. So this is what uh, we call as climate. Every region has certain climate. If there's a temperate region, then it would be the temperate climate. Right? I hope you understand. Weather changes with, it can even change within 24 hours or by two hours or in a week. So weather is a small short term uh, phenomenon. So to maintain the weather as well, we need hydrosphere, we need water. For physical functions, physical functions include the temperature, the soil, the air. So we need uh, water for all this as well. And under chemical functions, we count the, um, the chemical elements present in the soil. We all know that plant, absorbs ions uh, so it uh, what ions are always like water if present in the soil it will um, help the chemical species to form ions so these are the ions which are uh, which which plants uptake and use for their processes so it is the uh, water is something which helps and uh, governs the amount and type of chemical elements present in the soil and also in the water and also in the air. So the this is the chemical function of hydrosphere. It determines the amount and type of chemical elements present. And the biological functions are uh, like you can say providing habitat to plants and animals. It supports various life processes. It all comes under biological functions. I hope all these functions would be very clear to you all. So next is the oceans and seas are the largest sinks of carbon in the environment. So let's first understand what are sinks. Sinks, you can say in layman language, you can say sponge. Like sponge absorbs anything, sinks absorb. So... Or you can say anything that absor absorbs more than it releases, right? So for carbon sink, we can say anything that absorbs more carbon from the atmosphere than it releases. And for these, uh, like there are two terms. It's a sink, one is sink, another is a source. So when we call something a sink is when it absorbs from that uh, absorbs that particular thing from the atmosphere or from anything and it doesn't release that much amount and for the source it's uh, other way around it's like anything that releases more carbon into the atmosphere than it absorbs anything that is a source of carbon would release more carbon into the atmosphere than it will absorb some examples would be burning of fuels, like fossil fuel burning, uh, volcanic eruptions, etc. So it is the difference between sink and so source. Sinks always absorb. So ocean and seas are the largest sinks of carbon in the environment. They absorb the carbon from the environment. This is all we'll study for the hydrosphere. I hope it's clear.
going on to the next. The next is the atmosphere. Atmosphere again came, came from a Greek word that is atmos, which means vapor. So here we will study about two important heads, uh, study under two important heads, that is components of atmosphere, what all gases are included in atmosphere, what all gases we can find in our atmosphere, and the other is the layers of atmosphere. So let's first study what is atmosphere. A thin sheet of gaseous mixture. One second. The thin sheet of gaseous mixture which envelops the planet Earth is called the atmosphere. It is the definition of atmosphere. So there are plenty of gases present uh, around the Earth. So a thin sheet of gases which envelops our planet is called as atmosphere. The content of water vapor, the density of the air mass, and the atmospheric pressure decreases rapidly with the increase in altitudes. What does this mean? Like when we move away from the earth towards the atmosphere, so what we observe is the amount of water vapor and the density of air and the atmospheric pressure, that is the pressure in our atmosphere, will rapidly decrease as we move away from the earth. Or we can say with the increase in altitude, water vapor and the density of air and atmospheric pressure will decrease. I hope it's clear. Agar Hindi mein samajna hai, to jaise jaise hum earth se, like surface of earth se dur dur jate hai, to humara amount of water, kitna water vapor present hai humare atmosphere mein, humare air ki density kya hai, and the pressure of our atmosphere. वो जितना हम altitude के साथ बढ़ते हैं, मतलब जितना हम height के साथ बढ़ते हैं, वो उतना decrease होता चला जाता है. I hope this makes it very clear to you all. It is a feature of atmosphere. So the next is, the rate of change of temperature with the altitude is called the lapse rate. Lapse rate. So now what is lapse rate? Again, this is what I told you, that when we move away from Earth, हम जैसे Earth से ऊपर ऊपर जाते हैं, तो जैसे temperature, जैसे जैसे altitude बढ़ता है, तो there is a change in temperature. It could increase or it could decrease, right? This is what we call as lapse rate. Rate of change of temperature with altitude is what we call as lapse rate. So the atmosphere has been stratified into four ma uh, major layers where the temperature decreases. And this is the negative lapse rate and or the temperature increases, which is the positive lapse rate. So our atmosphere is divided into four layers. What happens is in each layer, there, e there is either a decrease in the temperature with altitude or an increase in the temperature with altitude. Matlab, in charo layers, mein, jaise hum move karte hai, upar ki taraf, so, either the temperature decrease or the temperature increase. If the temperature with height decrease, we will say that it is a negative lapse rate. And if the temperature with height increase, we so will say that it is a positive lapse rate. Clear? And lapse rate, I have told it is the rate of change of temperature with altitude. I hope it, it makes sense to you now. So, Players come baad mein padhengi. let's first understand the components present in the atmosphere. What are the gases that are present in our atmosphere? And what is the percentage? What is the volume? So the major component is the nitrogen. Nitrogen being the major component, it constitutes 78% of the atmosphere. The next is the oxygen, that is approximately 21% or 20.9%. Argon is present, argon is an inert gas and it is present in 0.9%. Carbon dioxide is present in trace amounts, that is 0.04%. And there are many other gases that are present in trace amounts. For example, helium, neon, hydrogen, methane and water vapor is also present in trace amounts. So this is uh, what is the composition of atmosphere. Our atmosphere has various gases. The major contributors are uh, major components. Sorry, 
the major components are nitrogen oxygen argon carbon dioxide we would say is present in trace amounts and there are many other gases present in trace amounts like methane oxides of nitrogen water vapor hydrogen helium etc i hope this is clear so the next what we were studying in lab state is look at this table so starting from the surface of earth let's study the layers of atmosphere the first one being the troposphere it extends from 0 to 11 kilometers and what is the temperature variance variance how is the temperature varying in this layer so from the temperature at the ground being 15 degrees celsius it decreases with height and reaches up to minus 56 degrees celsius so what we would say it has a negative lapse rate because the temperature is decreasing right so these are some prominent chemical species of this layer nitrogen oxygen argon this is what we read in the composition of air right composition of atmosphere and what are the characteristics of this layer weather conditions occur here we can see weather changes in this layer, weather phenomenon in this layer right so i hope troposphere is clear the next is stratosphere stratosphere is the next layer it extends from 11 to 50 kilometers here the temperature rises with altitude so what happens is at minus 56 degrees celsius to minus 2 degrees celsius temperature rises from minus 56 degrees celsius to minus 2 degrees celsius and the component of this layer is ozone yes this is where ozone is present it is very important to know that stratosphere is the layer where ozone is present and uh, what are the characteristics of stratosphere so ozone layer is present in this layer Clear. The next is mesosphere. Mesosphere extends from 50 kilometers to 85 kilometers. Here the temperature again decreases. So minus 2 to minus 96 degrees Celsius. So just for a second, for stratosphere, we skip this, but stratosphere will have a positive lapse rate. I hope you understand because temperature is increasing from minus 56 to minus 2. Right. So coming to mesosphere, here the temperature will again decrease and it will have a negative lapse rate. Prominent species are oxygen ion and nitric oxide ion. What are the characteristics is meteors burn in this layer. It's clear. Next. Next is thermosphere. So uh, it extends from 85 kilometers to, to 500 kilometers and the temperature varies from minus 96 to 1200 degrees celsius this means temperature is again rising so it would be a positive lapse rate in thermosphere thermosphere is also known as ionosphere so where number of ions are present in thermosphere here are the chemical species and auroras occur here this is the characteristic of thermosphere so what do you mean by auroras auroras in simple language we can say that when sorry when charged particles collide with gases in the earth's surface in the earth's atmosphere some charged particles will collide with the gases and they produce flashes of light flashes of colorful light this is what we call as auroras Clear? This is what we'll understand under the term atmosphere. I hope it's clear. Summarizing all this, we should know what are the components of atmosphere, what percentage they should have, uh, they constitute in the atmosphere, what all gases are present. We should know what is the definition of atmosphere. And how does the water vapor content and the density and pressure of atmosphere varies with the change in altitude? We read about lapse rate, what is lapse rate, and what are the layers of atmosphere? What are the 
what are the type of like is their lapse rate negative lapse rate negative or positive which layer has negative lapse rate and which layer has positive lapse rate what are the characteristics of these layers this is all what we read here i hope it's clear now again compiling all this what we read earlier so troposphere the altitude of this layer varies from 16 kilometers at equator and 8 to 8 kilometers at pole it is very important to know this that troposphere the layer of troposphere extends at 16 kilometer at the equator and 8 kilometers at the pole the largest percentage of air mass is found in this region we all know that maximum air mass, we also studied that density decreases with height. So definitely this layer will have the maximum density of air found in the air mass and it has the maximum percentage of air. The upper layer is called the tropopause. So the upper layer of troposphere is known as tropopause. In this layer, temperature decreases with an increase in altitude. This is what we read that in troposphere, we have a negative lapse rate. What is the lapse rate for troposphere? Minus 6.4 degrees Celsius per kilometer. As we said, that lapse rate is change in temperature with altitude. So its unit would be degrees Celsius per kilometers. Fine. And the lapse rate for troposphere is minus 6.4 degrees Celsius per kilometers. And it varies from 15 degrees Celsius at ground level and minus 56 degrees Celsius at, at tropopause. So this is the temperature variance we saw in the table in the previous slide. The next is the stratosphere. So temperature starts rising in this layer from tropopause to stratopause at two, minus 2 degrees Celsius. So the uppermost layer of tropo, uh, troposphere was tropopause. It was at minus 56 degrees Celsius temperature. So from this point to stratos stratopause, that is the uppermost layer of stratosphere, the temperature starts increasing. That is, it will have a positive lapse rate. What is the reason behind the positive lapse rate of stratosphere? So this is the presence of ozone. Ozone layering, the upper stratosphere, absorbs solar radiation and temperature rises. This is the reason why temperature rises in stratosphere. Presence of ozone, which leads to absorption of solar radiations and thus increase in the temperature. The ozone layer in this region absorbs harmful UV radiations. What does ozone layer do? It absorbs harmful UV radiations, particularly UVB radiation that has a wavelength of 280 nanometers to 315 nanometers, because of which life is possible on Earth's surface. So now what do they mean by life is possible on Earth's surface? So ozone, uh, ozone layer plays a very crucial role. That is, it, it, it absorbs the harmful UV radiation. We all know UV radiations are harmful. So uh, when the uh, solar radiations come from sun, how come we are protected by those radiations? Why we are not exposed to those radiations? Because there is a ozone layer which is forming an envelope and it is absorbing those radiations and not allowing them to pass through it. So this is why life is possible on Earth. We just, uh, you might have heard about that ozone hole. It is a very big issue nowadays, not nowadays from a decade. So why is it so? Because the this ozone has uh, the ozone, uh, the hole in the ozone layer has led to surpassing of these harmful UV radiations from it. The ozone layers are passing through it, which is leading to our exposure. We are exposed to harmful UV radiations. There are uh, There is an increase in the cases of skin cancer. This is because we are exposed to UV radiations. So the reason... Uh, life is possible on earth is because we have a zone layer which absorbs the harmful UV radiations. I hope it's clear. So the ozone layer is depleting at a fast pace due to the presence of ozone depleting substances like CFCs. CFCs are chlorofluorocarbons. These are the uh, chemical species which are released 
from uh, our refrigerators or coolants. These CFCs are actually coolants which we use in refrigerators and our air conditioners. So these are released into the atmosphere and they are the ozone depleting substance. They react with ozone and they deplete the layer. So ozone layer is depleting at a fast, uh, fast pace due to the presence of these ozone depleting substances. One of the examples is, examples is CFCs. Ozone holes are the places in the upper stratosphere where the concentration of ozone has depleted drastically. So how do we know that ozone has a hole in it? So ozone, the concentration of ozone is calculated in Dobson units. That is, it tells us about the column of ozone, like how much thick layer we have in the atmosphere. So at the places where the concentration of ozone has been decreasing or is depleting is what we call it ozone hole. That is, the concentration is depleting from the ideal concentration it should have been. So it is said to be ozone hole. I hope it is clear that what is ozone hole and why temperature increases in stratosphere and how life is possible on Earth because of the presence of ozone layer. Yeah? This is what we all studied under stratosphere. The next is mesosphere. In mesosphere, again, temperature starts decreasing. De decreasing and it reaches from minus 2 degrees Celsius to 50, minus 56 degrees Celsius. That, that is at the upper boundary of the layer, that is mesopause. What is mesopause? The uppermost layer of mesosphere is the mesopause. So in this layer, again, the temperature starts in, uh, decreasing and thus it has a negative lapse rate. The density of air is very low and important chemical species found in this region are oxygen, cation and nitric oxide cation. So what uh, happens in this layer is, as we know, we are moving very away from the earth, very much away, mesosphere, I think. Wait a second. It extends from fifty to eighty-five kilometers, as you can see here. So fifty to eighty-five kilometers away from the Earth. So the density of air will reduce to a very low amounts, right? The density of air is very low, and important chemical species are found that are found in this region are oxygen cation and nitric oxide cation which do not absorb uh, solar radiations. They are not absorbing solar radiations. This contributes to the reason that temperature again start decreasing. In stratosphere, ozone was absorbing solar radiations, which led to the temperature rise. But in mesosphere, temperature is again decreasing due to the presence of these chemical species, which do not absorb solar radiations. So this is what causes the decline in ambient temperature is in, in this region. I hope this is clear. Moving on to the next thermosphere. The main characteristics is the ionic oxygen atoms and other ions in this layer. This layer has mm -hmm. ionic species. So they absorb shortwave solar radiations, which again increases the temperature. Why thermosphere has a positive lapse rate? because it has ionic species, ionic oxygen atoms, which absorb shortwave solar radiations, thus increasing the temperature in this layer. And temperature increases from minus 96 degrees Celsius to 1200 degrees Celsius. This is a very rapid increase. And this happens because of the presence of these ionic species. I hope it's clear. All the four layers of the atmosphere should be clear to you all what chemical species are present in it, what is the lapse rate of each layer? Like, is it positive? Is it negative? What are the special features of each layer? Why is the temperature increasing or decreasing in these layers? This much should be very clear to you all. This is the diagram showing the layers of the atmosphere. See, starting from here, tropopause. In the, in the troposphere, sorry. In the troposphere, the temperature will decrease, right? It is decreasing till tropopause. After tropopause starts the stratos uh, stratosphere layer. So stratosphere, in stratosphere, we had 
positive lapse rate, right? So the temperature is increasing. Ozone layer is present in this uh, at this height. So temperature is increasing till stratopause. From stratopause, again, temperature will decrease. This means, again, the negative lapse rate in mesosphere. And in thermosphere, due to the presence of ionic species, due to their uh, due to the absorption of short wave solar radiations, again the temperature will increase in thermosphere up till twelve hundred degrees Celsius. I hope it is very much clear till now. The layers of atmosphere. So now, what's biosphere? Wait a second. Bios again a Greek word which means life. The sphere which where life exists is known as biosphere. So biosphere is most importantly the self-regulating overlapping region of the atmosphere, lithosphere and hydrosphere. So biosphere, what do we mean by biosphere? We have understood in the previous slide as well, but what is biosphere? It is a self-regulating, uh, I would say a self-regulating sphere of our uh, earth where hydrosphere, lithosphere, and atmosphere overlap. The regions where uh, the region where the atmosphere, lithosphere, and hydrosphere overlap is known as the biosphere. It is where life exists, the most important thing. And then where life sustainably exists. And life is nourished and flourished by the healthy interaction between these spheres and the biotic and abiotic components. I hope it's clear. This is also given in this picture. We have lithosphere, we have atmosphere, we have hydrosphere. So biosphere being the overlapping region of the, all these three spheres is the only unit that uh, that is sustaining life. This is where life exists and it is the self-regulating unit. So this is what we understand by biosphere. Biosphere has the uh, biosphere includes the healthy healthy interaction between biotic and abiotic components. This is all about biosphere. So, I think it would be it for this lecture. We'll continue in, in the next lecture. Thank you.